Hi everybody, again, um, it's Miss L here, lecturing, um, this is lecture number two of aquatic ecosystems, and this has to do with coral reefs, coral bleaching, as well as the impacts of the environment on the coral reefs as an aquatic ecosystem. So sit back tight and enjoy the ride. The main question here is why should we study about coral reefs? Coral reefs are pretty much the marine equivalent to a tropical rainforest. It habitats uh, for one-fourth of all marine species. And I'm going to talk to you really quickly about coral reefs as you stare at this beautiful picture. Um, they are found in warm, shallow waters beyond the shoreline. One of the biggest examples can be um, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, but you do find smaller ones in different places, such as Hawaii. Um, they're the Earth's most diverse, like I said before. They're tiny coral or tiny little animals that secrete a la layer of limestone, calcium carbonate. And we talked about calcium carbonate before, which is CaCO3. That's what makes up seashells. Um, they form this external skeleton, and the animal inside this tiny skeleton is a hollow tube, and it has tentacles. And that's how it draws in the plankton as well as the, as the detritus. And we talked about detritus before back in um, the previous unit. So these corals, they live in water that is poor in nutrients and in food, which is possible because they have a relationship with a single cell organism um, of algae that lives inside the tissues of the corals. So now we have the symbiotic relationship because it helps one another out, and that's a mutualistic relationship, which we're going to talk about more specifically in the next unit. Um, when the coral digests food, it's going to capture and release CO2 from the nutrients. Um, this algae uses that CO2 during photosynthesis to produce sugars and nutrients, and that's going to stimulate and release those nutrients and sugars to the coral. And then therefore that coral is going to have energy. Um, it's a safe place to live for the algae, and in turn, it provides food for the coral. Um, this association with this uh, means or this with the algae means that corals can only live in shallow waters and this is because you need to have the sun to penetrate down to have that photosynthesis process. So again, you're not going to see it in deep deep waters but you are going to see it in more of the shallow waters of the ocean. An example is the massive one is the Great Barrier Reef and that covers about 1600 uh, square miles. Um, one of the things that are facing our wide range of challenges is going to be your coral bleaching and I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay so now we know what coral is, let's look at the structure again. There are these uh, coral polyps. They're typically found in warm coastal waters and these new polyps, um, these organisms are going to attach to that old coral and they're going to gradually build a reef as they go along. So again, why should we study and why should we care? It's because it's they're massive colonies of these organisms that are going to provide habitats for all of these marine species. So let's look at a food web real quick. It's very complex. As you can see, there's many different trophic levels here and consumers that are represented here. So you can go ahead and take a look, and this is something that you might be um, asked to do in an AP exam is to um, kind of um, show what this means or the importance of this food web when it pertains to aquatic ecosystems. When you look at the climate of coral reefs, they're usually found, again, in uh, shallow waters. Uh, lots of light because of photosynthesis, because of that symbiotic relationship. And you usually see them in the tropical temperatures. So again, think about the equatorial plate um, in the ecosystems, um, averaging around 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit year-round. So Australia, Costa Rica, uh, some places a little bit in Hawaii. For the e ecosystems, the ones with the highest NPP, and that we'll kind of look at um, throughout this class is going to be your tropical rainforest is number one, estuaries is number two that we talked about in the last lecture, and then coral reefs, and then it kind of goes into open oceans and, and so forth. But that's kind of the order of NPP for your product pr uh, productivity. And again, why should we care? Um, they grow very slowly. They're very fragile. They're complex relationships. Again, you have many different symbiotic relationships from fish to um, you know, sea anemone, where you have, again, the coral and the algae, and it's high bio biodiversity. Here's more of a simple food chain. So you can see here you, you have your phytoplankton to your zooplankton, coral, starfish, octopus, and then moray eel. So you can see there's many different um, consumer levels that are shown here, as well as trophic levels. Remember, your phytoplankton um, is going to be um, one level, and then as you go up, you just count. So what can happen is you can have a lot of damage. They're very sensitive. Like I said, they're very um, 
fragile to environmental changes. So a couple things are happening. Um, if the algae goes, so does the, um, the coral reefs. And that's what's called coral bleaching because when they die, they start to turn white. Uh, there's actually a very pretty beach, but you cannot walk in it barefoot, and that is a coral beach. It's a lot of dead coral, but it's very sharp, and it can cut your feet. Um, with that being said, when they die, they turn white, and that's what it means by coral bleaching, so we're not putting anything um, else onto it. Um, the other thing that happens, how it kind of dies, is the addition um, to the acid in the water. Because how they can die and how the algae can be disruptive is that they have a prime pH. They have a prime temperature. So what's going to change the pH of the water? Acid in the water. And how do you get acid in the water? You have a high amount of CO2 that's from the atmosphere. It dissolves into the ocean, and that's going to make your carbonic acid. I believe it's a C, um, H2CO3. And that in turn is going to change the pH, which is going to then disturb the algae and the coral relationship and the algae is going to die out, and therefore it's going to bleach those corals and kill them. Um, this also can be the result of too much CO2 in the atmosphere from runoff, from pollution, or reef fishing, etc. So again, here is a blank slide. Never mind, let me get rid of that. In your textbook, when we look at human activities, um, you can find this in your website, and this is more of human impact, or excuse me, natural capital, of de that's being degraded from these coral reefs. Mainly it's human activities, um, but you can you need to look at the economic and the um, ecological services provided by these marine systems um, about the red alert, what's happening. So I would suggest there's a couple of these, is pick two to three that you can memorize and be able to explain for the AP exam. And that is it. Have a great night.